Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to create a simple logon form so you can provide authentication as well as authorization for your application. What I want to show you first of all is that I've created this JSPX page. It's called My Protected Page. And I just want to allow certain users to access the page, not any authenticated user. What I mean is a user that belongs to the manager group. Configuring ADF security can be quite easy, especially if you choose to stick with the default uh, HTML login form that can be automatically generated for you. Now, if you need to have an ADF login page that contains actual ADF components, then a little bit more coding is involved and that's beyond the scope of this video tutorial. Okay, so what we're going to do here is first of all, just take a look here at the protected page. All it does is it, it just says protected page up here. And uh, we want to, first of all, enable security. Okay, so we're going to go up to Application and say Secure Configure ADF Security. We want to do Authentication, which just means, hey, did the user provide the proper username and password? We also have Authorization, which means once they're authenticated, do they have access to the particular resource? So now we hit Next. Let's choose form-based authentication, and we're going to generate default pages. Now, don't be alarmed. These are regular HTML pages, and it is fine if you have an ADF application that has just regular HTML logins. The drawback is that the page won't have a, a completely consistent look and feel. So as I mentioned, if you need to have an ADF login, then there's a little bit of coding behind that. But let's just stick with the default for right now and then we'll hit next. There's this special role called test all role um, and uh, we do not want to perform automatic grants. Let's just hit next. Let's leave this unchecked. We don't want to redirect. And the reason why is um, we're going to have the end user actually try to run a requested page and then if they're not already authenticated then it t automatically takes them to the login page. And that's what we call implicit authentication. We hit next and then finish. Now the next thing we need to do is create users. So we're going to go back in here into the application and go to secure and here we have you know users, groups and so on. By the way all of this is managed inside of this jazzanddata.xml file so this is our identity store and we're going to create a couple users. So the first user we're going to create will be Bob. And then the second user will be Julie. Okay, so now enterprise roles, think of these as being a group. So you can group users together inside of enterprise roles. So I might say, you know what, I have a role called manager group. And for this example, I'm just going to assign Bob to that, but I'm not going to let Julie be a part of that. Then the application role are roles that you can create and then you typically are going to assign resources to the application roles. So you'll see that there are two built-in roles here and uh, we don't have the ability to delete these from here. Okay, so what we're going to do here is uh, create a new one, add it at the root level and we'll just call it manager. And we're going to associate the enterprise role of a manager group to that. Okay, so once again we have Bob here who belongs to the manager group. The manager group belongs to manager and then here's manager. What grants does manager have? Well right now nothing has been granted to manager. This is where we go to our resource grants. Okay, so in here I want to go to web page and here's my protected page, but it says that there's no page definition. If there's no page definition and the page doesn't belong to a bounded task flow, then it's not a protected page. In other words, anybody can access it. As soon as we right click on here and we go to page definition, it generates a page definition file for us. 
So now when we go back to this file right here, you'll see the icon has changed and now we can uh, apply grants to it. So here I'm going to add an application role and I'll say, okay, only managers. Save what we have so far. Okay, so there's my protected page. Let's refresh. And you'll see that when we went through the wizard, it created these two pages for us. Let's take a look at the login.html page. I mean, if you wanted to add other bells and whistles like images and things, you could, but it looks very basic. It doesn't have the ADF look and feel because it's not an ADF page. It's a regular HTML page. It's important that you understand what's going on underneath the covers though here. So here we have our form and it's going to this J underscore security underscore check. Okay, do not change that name. What happens during runtime is the authentication servlet, the ADF authentication servlet is looking for this information. It's also looking for the J underscore username and J underscore password. So if you change these, it will break your application. That's all we have to do to create this. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to right click on here and say run. Okay, let's, so let's first of all log in as Bob and then we'll put in his username, password. Okay, hit submit and now we're taken to the protected page. Now if we run it again with the credentials of Julie, you'll see that we have this 401 unauthorized page. Now, if you want to customize this, you can always go into your web.xml page and say, you know what, whenever we access, whenever we encounter the 401 error, it actually takes us to such and such web page. Or you can configure that on the ADF faces layer uh, with your task flows, uh, configuring an error page. So in that example, we just protected the page itself, but no particular components within the page. What if we wanted to put a table on here, an ADF table, and protect that resource? In other words, if we wanted to allow both Bob and Julie to access the page, but only let managers, in other words, Bob, access the actual table, uh, we, could, we could actually do that. What we'd first of all need to do is uh, make sure that we have an entity object and view object and have that inside of our um, application module. Okay, you know the deal. Um, here is our entity object right here. We would need to go to the security section and this is where we say, you know what, we want to enable read operations. You can also select, uh, you know, uh, updating, removing current row, things like that. In fact, I'm going to check all of those. Okay, and so now we want to go back to our secure right here and we're going to now go to our resource grants. Notice here under resource type we want to now uh, take a look at ADF entity object right here. Okay, so ADF entity objects, here we have employees, source project model. If you don't see it in there you might have to hit this and, and actually move it over. Okay, and now we can say granted to and specify the application role, we'll say manager right here. So it's right over here where you can specify what actions that the manager can do. I'm just going to say read for right now. Now I want to change the permissions for the page. Let's make sure that we select the view controller right there. There's my protected page. Instead of granting this to manager, let's grant it to all authenticated users. So the authenticated role right there. Another thing I'd like to do, just to make things a little more informative, is on my uh, protected page right here, we can go to our properties. Here's the title. I can go to my expression builder and instead of just saying protected page, I can say welcome and then the username. So I can just go right in here to my ADF bindings. Here's our security context. Username is right there. Hit OK. And one more obvious thing, we want to 
grab our data control and actually put the table on the page. So let's just drag this over here and let's do table here. Like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and test this out. We'll log in as Bob first and hit submit. And here's our data. Now I'm going to kill this window and let's run it again, this time as Julie, and you'll see the difference in behavior. So you'll see here that I'm on the page, it recognizes that I'm Julie, but it says there's no data to display when there really is. Okay, so that's what the entity object validation looks like. I hope you found this video tutorial very useful. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.